Sunday School book entitled Zechariah Redeemed and also the international lesson that coincides Zechariah Speaks and we're studying from Luke the first chapter verses 57 through 66 and then the Sunday School lesson jumps to verses 76 through 79 but we're going to cover all of it and keep everything in context so we have a clear understanding of the meaning about Zechariah being redeemed and, and now that he's speaking. Now, should you have any question about today's lesson or any biblical or religious question, you may email us at McBrideAlexander1958 at gmail.com. That's McBrideAlexander, M-C-B-R-I-D-E-A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R-1958 at gmail.com. You may also call us at 843-812-7876 and even Facebook us on my Facebook page, just type in Alexander McBride and click on the icon of the ha uh, handsome little snouts of puppy and you'll get all of the sermons and Sunday schools for the past couple of years or so. The aforementioned information will be posted at the end of this broadcast. May I also invite you to uh, worship in person with us at 601 New Street, Beaufort, South Carolina, right behind the Chocolate Tree downtown Beaufort. We meet each Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11.15 a.m. for Sunday school and from 11.15 a.m. to approximately 12.30 for formal worship. And we will continue to do so if the Lord's will throughout this current year. However, we will not be meeting for Thursday Bible studies until after the new year. And we will start on January 12th, 2023 at 6 p.m. for prayer and 7 p.m. to 8 p.m for a Bible study. You may come and ask any question from about the Bible or religion, and we will seek the answer from the Word of God. We are currently studying the book of Revelation, and in addition to these services during our normal hours of operation, may I also invite you to, uh, uh, to our watch night services to be held at 10 p.m. on the 31st of December. This will, is when we come out and testify as to the goodness of God in the past year and our expectation of his continued goodness in the year to come. We will conclude the services with a, 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 a lights out ceremony to be turned back on right after the ringing in of the new year. So before you go out and celebrate, why don't you come to church and truly celebrate what is really important, the glory and goodness of God in our lives. But before we get started, May I also remind you that with the help of Second Helpings and other contributors to whom we say thank you so very much to our partners, we are still distributing food from our food pantry, especially in this time of need. This is done at our educational building, our parsonage located on the corner of Prince and New Street, right next door to the church. We do this each second and fourth Sunday from 12 noon until resources are depleted. The only prerequisite that we have is that you have a need and help us to meet that need and also to follow the instructions by the distributors for their safety as well as your own. Thank you all so very, very much for your sacrifices and faithfulness. And with that said, my beloved, let us see now how Zachariah 
was redeemed. Here we go. Oh my goodness, my beloved, that is an age old song to which I never ever tire of. Yeah, it, it, in my soul, it magnifies the Lord to the epitome of my mortal self that I can say, oh holy night, oh night divine, amen? Amen. Now, before we get started, let us read our, through our Sunday School lesson right quick, and then we'll uh, uh, go into expositional teaching of these verses. We also put it in context also. But let us read first, starting at Luke, the first chapter, starting with the 57th verse. <clears throat> it reads as follows. Now, Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by that name. And they made signs to the father how he would have him called, and he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all, and his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came upon all that dwelt round about them, and all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? and the hand of the Lord was with him. And then it skips down to the 76th verse uh, through the 79th verse, and it reads as following Thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest, and thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high, hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and understanders of his written word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for how you've blessed us and it's blessing us, Lord God. We come before you as humble as we know how, Lord God, and we stretch out our hearts and our hands and our minds, Lord, to you asking for understanding, revelation of your word and illumination of your word. Holy Spirit, work through me now that I may profess and, and proclaim the word of God that's already established, Lord God, and touch the hearers, Lord, one and all, that you may open up their understanding, their hearts and their minds and their wills to hear and to do your word. Let us help us celebrate this time of a joyous occasion, even though we know in the background the cross is looming. Now, O oh Lord, less of me and more of you, O oh God, please let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my Redeemer and my strength. And the church of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Now, here we go. We've got to get everything caught up and whatnot. We found out that Gabriel has come to uh, John, and John wanted to know how these things going to be, and he asked in doubt, and in asking in doubt, uh, uh, the angel Gabriel shut his mouth, and it's also believed, as we'll see in this lesson, cut off his ears too. So not only was he made a, a, a dumb, but he was made deaf also, according to the writings that alluded to in here. And then also, we find out that Mary uh, was visited by Gabriel also, and as Mary uh, uh, was a visited by Gabriel, we find out that Mary said that, uh, you know, let it be unto me as uh, a handmaiden, as a servant and whatnot. So we find out that God's promise to Mary was taking place also. But we're dealing basically with John going, getting up to Mary's uh, uh, magnificent and so on and so forth. But in any event, we have here now Mary has finished just singing her song. She sings a song in verses 54 uh, uh, through 56 uh, as we get into the lesson uh, starting at 57 and whatnot. So Mary just finishing singing her song called 
the Magnificat. And as she did so, uh, 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 she said in the last part of that, that he has hope and he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed. Now he's, she's with Elizabeth at the time. And in the context of this lesson, uh, Elizabeth is about uh, six months alone and Mary is just realizing her pregnancy via the Holy Spirit. Now, as the scripture goes on in verse 56, we see that Mary stayed with Elizabeth the last three months of her pregnancy as a nine month term is going and she returned to her house. Now, some say she left early, some say she stayed and helped Elizabeth with the pregnancy. We don't know. All we know is they're saying here in verse 56 that Mary stayed with Elizabeth, her cousin, which make Jesus and John cousins for about three months there. And here we go with the lesson said, Elizabeth full time, the nine months came up. Uh, all right, the full time has come. And Luke describes this as a, a, a happy in, event in the terms of the Lord's mercy also. Uh, Elizabeth's uh, full-time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. This took off all of the stigma that the Jewish people had at, at a barren woman calling her cursed or displeased by God uh, uh, for being barren. But now Elizabeth's honor is being restored as she has brought forth a son, which is the delight of the women at that time. And her neighbors, verse 58, and her cousins, so all the family, and that lets us know also that when Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem, they didn't go alone. They went in the entourage of family as they were of the uh, lineage of David, who was uh, of the city of Bethlehem, uh, Judea. And so uh, here we go. She done had to son. And, and the neighbors and the cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy. And that great mercy is detailed as her having this son. And they rejoiced with her. Isn't it good that you have family? family that's why family is so important. The neighbor, the uh, uh, surrogate family, as well as the realized family also, uh, that they would rejoice in your joy. They would be happy in your happiness instead of being uh, jealous and envious of what God has done for you. But she brought forth a son and everybody rejoiced with her. And then it said it came to pass. That means it happens. Whenever you see that in the Bible, it came to pass, mean that it happened. And not only that it happened, it happened at the time God said it was going to happen. It said that they would circumcise the child. Now, Genesis 17, 12 says that, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you every man child in your generation. Now that is God talking to Abraham and later on it became part of the Levitical law in Leviticus 12 and three. Yeah, uh, now it is said that on the eighth day also is when they named the child. Now it's curious uh, 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 that the relationships tried to name the child, but according to the Jewish custom as developed, uh, at this time, that the day that the child was circumcised was the day that the child was named. And the neighbors and the cousins and everybody out of the tradition of naming the male child, especially the firstborn, Junior, after their father. So they called the child Zacharias after the name of his father. Now Mary got, not Mary, but Elizabeth got in the mix at this time in verse 60. His mother, talking about Elizabeth, answered and said, not so, that's important. That means, no, 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 may it never be. Now, Neginitai, as it would be called in the Greek, but he shall be called John. Now, that's looking towards the future. He shall be called John. Now, that's another uh, 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 misperception that uh, he shall be called John. His name is John, and we'll see why. Verse 6 to 1, and they said unto her, uh, now, these are the neighbors, this is the family, paying no attention to the woman and trying to bypass her. Look at what they said. There is none of your kindred that's called by his name. So why you want to name him John? So they turned to Zacharias because they're going to disregard Mary and what she has just said. Uh, that's when other folks try to get involved in your married life. And that's why it should be that uh, husband should back up the wife, wife should back up the husband, but there's a deeper, deeper thing that's going on here because God is involved in the naming of this child also. So they made signs to the father 
Now, if he's just only uh, dumb and can't speak, that means he can hear. But if he's deaf also, they would have to make signs to him to help him to understand. Uh, and so they made signs to the father. How would you have him call? So he asked for, in verse 63, this writing tablet, to which I know that writing tablet really, really got a workout if he was deaf and dumb, right? And so they asked him, how would he be called? And he asked for this tablet in verse 63, and this is what he wrote down. He didn't say his name shall be called John. He said his name is John. Why is it John? Because Gabriel named it, because God told Gabriel to give uh, uh, Zechariah the message. His name shall be called. That was back at the altar right now that he's born. His name is John. And everybody marveled at that name. And that name, John, uh, I mean, Jehovah is gracious, is a gracious giver. And that is on two parts. As Christianity is brought forth based on uh, the forerunner of Jesus, John, and then Jesus Christ, it's all about giving. So Jehovah, God, is a gracious giver. And that's what this the whole relationship thing is about. It's about giving, not so much as the getting, but the giving. So God is making himself known, and he's starting with John, uh, i.e. John the Baptist, and his name is John. And everybody marveled. They were, what, what, what's going on here? And as soon as he wrote that down, that curse that had been put upon him because of his doubt, now in obedience to the word of God, the curse is lifted. Don't you know when we obey that sin is washed away? We show our love for God. We show our gratitude to God through our obedience to God. So in this obedience, we see how the curse is lifted. And as soon as he wrote that name down, said his tongue was loose and he opened his mouth. And the first thing he did when he opened his mouth, he praised God. Look at verse 64. Say his tongue was loose. He spoke and praised God. Lord, I thank you that the curse is lifted, for lack of better words. And verse 65 said, fear, this is not being scared, but reverence came upon all that dwelt round about them. And all these sins was just spread abroad, uh, not just gossip, but pondered in the hearts of the people, wondering what's going on here. This old woman and this old man and had a child and he, he came out of the temple and he couldn't speak for nine months. Now all of a sudden he's speaking and he's praising God as he's speaking and they naming this child after somebody that's not even in their lineage. Something is going on around here. In other words, they were paying attention to the signs that were being uh, given to them and that's what a sign is. Not so much as a miracle, a sign is something that God gives to point to something greater. And these signs were happening to point to something greater. And this child, uh, John, would be called the greatest in the sight of God, the greatest prophet that ever lived, even though he did not do not one miracle. Amen. So it was noised abroad throughout the hill country of Judah. And all they that sat heard them. And like I said, it's more than gossip. They laid these things up. They pondered them just like Mary did in their hearts, wondering, what manner of child shall this be? We're going to keep our eye on him. And the hand of the Lord was with him, with John. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost, and he prophesied. And this is known as the Benedictus, my beloved, of Zechariah. And the Benedictus is divided into four parts, uh, four strokes, as you may say. Uh, uh, verses 68 through 70 is thanksgiving for the Messiah. And verses 71 through 75 is the great deliverance. And then verses 76 through 77 and, uh, is called the place of John, which we'll be discussing. And 78 through 79 is the Messi uh, messianic salvation. And we will be talking uh, 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 from those verses also. So let's uh, go ahead and jump now. Uh, two verses 76 uh, as we go into this lesson. Now, we might have expected that Zechariah's song would be all about his little boy, John, but he surprised us at the beginning with uh, the Messiah whom God was about to send. 
but he was very pleased about John. And in this part of his song, this is a song, everybody singing, Mary singing, Zachariah singing, uh, Elizabeth singing, everybody singing, amen. He is bringing joy to the world for the Lord is come. But he was very pleased about John. And in this part of the song, he prophesies about the child's future. He's starting in verse 76. He addresses him directly and says that he will be called the prophet of the most high. There have been no prophet among the Jews for centuries, for over 400 years. So the words should not be taken too calmly that something was about to happen. John would represent a radical departure from what had become customary. He was about to tear down all of their customs. And not only was he to be a prophet, but he was to prepare the Lord's way. He would be the forerunner to the Messiah. And specifically, he would tell people about the coming salvation in the forgiveness of their sins. John would not uh, say people, no man could, but he would call people to repentance and tell them about the one who could save them. That's verses 76 through 77. And I just want you to give note to it that he shall be called the prophet of the most high. And he is giving, you look at what he's giving in verse 77, he's giving, and in verse 79, he's giving. The first thing he's giving in 77 is knowledge of salvation. And that is the revelation of God to us. That's called God's grace when he revealed himself to us, when he comes into our little box and let us know who he is. And in verse 79, to which we'll get to, he gives illumination after he gives that revelation to give light. And not only light just to the Jews in 79, as we'll find out is pointing to the Gentiles also. So here we are. The first is the knowledge of salvation unto his people. How? By the remission of their sins. And when we talk about remission, a thesis, my beloved, that is pardon, that is forgiveness, the forgiveness of sins, the knowledge of salvation. And the good news is that their sins would be forgiven. And how is this done? Through the tender mercy of our God. Uh, as Zechariah finished his song by dwelling on the common salvation, it will come through God's tender mercy. The compassion of God is a constant theme of the New Testament. The old priest goes on to speak of salvation in terms of illumination of light, the contrast between light and darkness, between that which is revealed and that which is hidden is a natural one, but nonetheless powerful for that part. Amen. It is possible to understand this Greek day spring. And when we said uh, day spring here in Beaufort, South Carolina, in the surrounding air area, the Anatole, the day spring, they call it day clean. That means a new day has come and everything is uh, starting brand new. So the day spring is happening here. Anatole means sometimes a shoot. It's possible to see the reference of the Messiah as a shoot from Jesse, as he would be called in Isaiah 11 and 1. The word, however, normally means the rising of the sun or the rising of a star. And hence the sun or star itself, uh, 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 we should perhaps see the contrast between light and darkness. The concluding note is that of peace, that peace of God that calms our heart and makes us strong to live for God. It doesn't mean merely freedom from trouble. It means all that makes for a man's highest good. It is called, called peace even in the midst of trouble. It said through the tender mercy, the grace of our God, it's a brand new thing is happening. And look at this uh, uh, a word, he has visited us. Uh, this word is called bishop. He has bishoped us. And that was prophesied of John that he would visit and redeem, uh, cause the redemption of us. The, the, the day clean, the brand new start, this visit is the bishop. It's the same thing in the military as the passing review. You inspect the people, but they said if, uh, when, when, when God inspected us, when God visited us, he found us wanting and lacking. And that's why he sent his son uh, uh, to die for our sins because we had no redemption in and of ourselves, And we're not only that, he is visiting us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. And if you wonder who this is, go to Luke 2, 2, 2, 32, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. So he's coming for Israel and he's coming for the Gentiles. This light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet 
into the way of peace. Not just peace with each other, but peace with God because God is angry with the sinner every day. We are at enmity with God as long as we live in our sin, but God is offering this peace through the redemption and the blood of Jesus Christ. And John the Baptist is just the beginning of the herald of one greater than Abraham, one greater than David that is about to break the seams of time and show a light to them that sit in darkness. And the last but not least said the child grew and he grew strong and was in the deserts to the day of his showing until Israel. And we know what's coming next. There was a voice of one crying in the wilderness calling repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Oh, holy night. God, I thank you and I bless you and thank you for the time as we cover the Sunday school lesson for this Sunday. Until next time, my beloved, let Corn Bell live in your face. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and terror pining Till he appears and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices For yonder breaks that you and God Bye.